What's up students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today I want to do another QQT question, which is one of the free response types of questions that you're going to see qualitative quantitative translation. A lot of people have been emailing me asking me where I get these questions and if I could send them to them. I pretty much guys I'm getting these right from the AP classroom. So right from the College Board website. So if your teacher has not unlocked those questions, you just email them. It's not a big deal. They can they can unlock them for you. I pretty much just assign them right from the AP classroom. And each one of them has a name. This one is called The Figure Shows a Part of a Track at an Amusement Park. So I'm gonna work through each part and show you exactly where you would've got points for this. This question should take you about 25 minutes to do. So if this is the first time you're seeing it, you can also read it pause the video, try and answer it, and then come back for the solution. That's another option as well. So let's start to work through this. Essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a cart that's gonna be accelerated down from A to B, and then it's gonna go up, 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 and over, and come down. And pretty much they want us to focus on this little ball that's hanging from a string, and what that ball is gonna do when it's at certain points on this track. And in every single question, we're gonna to have to find the horizontal component of the tension, and also the vertical component of the tension. And then we're also going to have to draw a picture on that particular diagram. So essentially each part is gonna be worth three points. One point for drawing the picture right, one point for getting the, the component of the horizontal tension, and the other one for getting the vertical component of the tension. So each one is gonna be worth three points. So this first question here for part A1, it says, uh, on the diagram to the right, draw and label the forces acting on this ball. Okay, so on this ball right here, which is really this ball here. It's hanging, nothing's going on right now at point A. So I'm gonna have a force of gravity that's gonna pull down and a force of tension that's gonna pull up. There are no other forces here, so in this question you got one point for writing these two forces correct, one point for not writing any other silly forces, and then the next point is gonna be coming from here. So we see that the F net on this system is equal to zero newtons because it's not accelerating in any direction. We could also say that F net is gonna be the sum of the forces acting. So I'm gonna say Fg minus Ft. So therefore, I can combine these two and say that zero newtons equals Fg minus Ft. That allows me to say that Fg is equal to Ft, and then I just have to solve mg equals ft, and you have to substitute in, ft is equal to 0.1 kilograms, 10 meters per second squared, ft is equal to one newton. And that's really important because we're gonna use that a couple other places. And guys, something to note for the 2020 exam, they are not requiring you to use a calculator. This would be an example of something they could ask you to do, right? You should be able to do this without a calculator. So I've heard some teachers and some people say, you know, that if there's any math that needs a calculator, that don't worry about that question. Guys, you're still are gonna be required to know simple multiplication. So this would be a fair question on the 2020 exam. As far as solving for angles later, that does require a calculator, but there are some angles that you do need to know that you just know from you know algebra courses and stuff, but essentially if you see an angle, that's not gonna be allowed, but simple algebra you can. So let's work on letter B here. Now remember, this dotted line does not represent the string. They put this here as reference of the vertical. So the ball was hanging out right here, but now think about something from your rear view mirror if you're driving in a car. As the car takes off, if this ball was hanging out here, the car would leave without it, right? Newton's first law says this ball is going to stay at rest until it's moved by an outside net force. So the car starts to leave. Well, what is the thing that essentially moves this ball? Well, it's going to be the tension. At some point, the ball is going to be way back here, and the tension is going to say, hey, let's go. It's time to go this way. So this is going to be tension B. This is going to be tension V. Now you wouldn't draw these forces on the picture, I'm just showing you, okay? So here's the one point, you would just write the string and the ball. And then these are the two things that they want us to solve for. Well, TB is the force that makes the ball accelerate, right? TB is the force that makes the ball accelerate. So therefore, I also know that a force that makes a ball accelerate is given by Newton's second law. So now I could say that TB just equals MA. The mass of the ball is 0.1 kilograms, it's given that this thing accelerates at five meters per second squared. 
Therefore, Tb is just equal to 0.5 newtons. Now the ball isn't accelerating upwards or downwards, so I know that in the vertical direction, F net is equal to zero. And once again, I'm gonna call it down positive, so I'm gonna say F net is now gonna be equal to Mg minus the vertical component of the tension. So this is the same as the last part. We see that the vertical component of the tension is just equal and opposite to the weight of the ball, which is one Newton. So you got one point for writing the ball on the string correctly, one point for solving for this correctly, and one point for solving for that correctly. So now the card is being pulled up. Constant speed is a great thing. What this constant speed is gonna tell me is that F net everywhere is gonna be equal to zero Newtons. So essentially the ball is going to just be hanging right like this. Nothing is going to make it accelerate in the horizontal direction and nothing's gonna make it accelerate in the vertical direction. So that's gonna make our life pretty easy. Since there's no forces in the horizontal direction for tension, TB is just gonna be equal to zero Newtons. And that's because there's no F net, there's no forces there. And once again, we see that the vertical is just gonna be equal to one Newton. And that's the exact same as this. I would recommend redoing this work and showing it again, just for time purposes. I, I don't wanna make the video too long, so I don't wanna work through it. But essentially, there is a force of gravity acting down on the ball, the force of tension, they're equal and opposite, F net equals zero. Boom, that's good. All right, so let's move on to D here. And D was the one that I think students got the most hung up on. First and foremost, here is the vertical. And once again, we have an acceleration. So if this thing was accelerating down the incline, the ball would shoot right out the back of the window, right? If you were floating in the middle of this car and the car took off and accelerated, you would end up out the back window. The reason the ball doesn't end up out the back window is because of the tension force. So here's the ball that wants to go out the back window this way because the car is accelerating, but it can't. So now I'm going to have a tension force that acts in this direction here. So I'm gonna draw it over here so I don't disrupt the picture. Just moving this over so I can draw some things. So we have a horizontal component of the tension and we also have a vertical component of the tension, but there's another force on this ball which is equal to Fg. So here's where things get a little annoying for kids. If I simplify this once again, we see that this force here, this Tb, and this sum of the forces in the y direction gives a resultant net force that makes this mass accelerate. And that acceleration is given. And guys, I don't know how obvious it is to you, but these are gonna be alternate interior angles. So this angle right here is going to be 30 degrees, right? Consider this the horizontal and this a horizontal. If these two lines are parallel and this was 30, which is the angle of the incline, so would this be. So this is 30, then up here, that'd be 30 as well. So essentially what I have to do is I have to solve for TB, which is generally the easier one here because the TB is the component that's going to be contributing to the F net that's gonna make this thing accelerate. So I have the adjacent side to work with and I have the hypotenuse side to work with. So I know that the cosine of the angle is gonna be equal to that adjacent, TB, divided by the F net, and I know that F net is equal to MA. So I could simplify this to say TB, I'm gonna multiply this up here to get the cosine of theta times MA. So the cosine of 30 degrees times 0.1 kilograms times five meters per second squared, that is gonna be equal to 0.43 Newtons. So now I'm gonna work on the vertical side. So I know that the sum of the forces in the y direction is gonna be mg minus Tv. So right now I'm gonna be working with this component here, which is really over here as well, and that's gonna be the opposite. So instead of using cosines, I'm gonna use sines. I'm gonna say that the sine of theta is gonna be equal to the F net in the Y direction divided by the F net that makes the car accelerate. So these two different F nets are where students get confused. One is the sum of the forces in the Y direction, that's this. And one is the sum of the forces of the X and Y directions that make the car accelerate, that's this. So I can now say that the F net in the Y direction is equal to sine theta times MA, 
right? This is MA right here. But I also just said this expression here for F net in the Y direction. So I'm gonna take that expression and I'm gonna bring it down here to say MG minus TV equals sine theta MA. So TV can now be expressed as MG minus sine theta MA. Let's plug some stuff in, 0.1 kilograms, 10 meters per second squared, minus sine of 30 degrees times 0.1 kilograms times five meters per second squared. That means that TV is gonna be equal to 0.75 newtons. The car at point E is upside down with an instantaneous speed, so this is a tangential speed of 25 meters per second, and no tangential acceleration. That is awesome news and we have an R of 25. Now, why is it also news that there's no tangential acceleration? Well, if F net is equal to zero newtons because A equals F net over M, so if they tell me that A is zero, that means that F net is zero, so that means that there's no forces in the horizontal direction, so therefore TB is just equal to zero newtons. There's no horizontal tension forces because there is no net forces acting in that direction. And there's no other thing besides tension that could give force left or right. So now let's look at the y direction now. So we see that F net in the y direction is gonna be the sum of the forces acting. Now this could be a little tricky. Let's look at this dotted line here. Right, that's right here. So right now, the forces acting on this ball, the ball is gonna be up here, right? Like if you go in a loop, you stay in your seat, you don't fall and hit the ceiling. So now what are the forces act the actually on this ball? We have the force that acts downward, Fg, and I'm gonna call that positive, but now we also have the tension force that acts this way as well. So both these forces act together and say that Fg plus Ft, which we are just calling T vertical. And we also know that the F net for an object moving in a circle is called Fc, which is equal to mv squared over r. So I can rewrite this whole expression now and combine these two and say that mv squared over r equals mg plus this tv that we're trying to find. tv therefore is equal to mv squared over r minus mg. tv equals one kilogram, point one, I'm sorry, 25 squared, divided by 25. You guys, of course, are gonna put in your units minus 0.1 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. So TV is equal to 1.5 Newtons. And don't forget to write where the string goes. All right, guys, so this is a pretty good QQT question. Look forward to more solutions. I'm gonna try and get one out pretty much every other day. I'm gonna flip flop back and forth between these QQTs and the short answer paragraph questions because that's what we're gonna see this year on the 2020 exam. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I hope you guys have an amazing day.